Let's turn back the clock a little bit. About a month ago, I made a video about Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, and more specifically, the Shibuya Incident. This is an arc that most people can agree is, you know, really good, and its anime has done nothing but elevate it into more worldwide acclaim. And I'm really happy to see how popular the series has become. But Jujutsu Kaisen has become universally praised with its anime. Notice how I said anime. The manga, on the other hand, and its recent events are... Ooh, <laughs> they're, they're quite the different story. The manga discourse has been very, very intense. So much debate, so much drama, so many casualties, both figuratively and literally. And so much uncertainty for the future of the series. I've talked about Jujutsu on multiple different occasions, but... As a manga reader, as the series is in the height of its popularity, as the series creates more discourse within its current events while slowly drawing to a close, I can't not make a video on this. So I think it's time we talk about some of the most controversial material the series has ever put to the table. I think it's time we talk about post Shibuya Jujutsu Kaisen. The thing that made this first act of JJK so great was that buildup. Every arc prior was building towards Kenjaku's plan. This one arc, this one night for the curses to wreak havoc and to change the entire scope of the Jujutsu world. So then the question becomes... Uh... Okay, what now? Boom, Yuta's chasing down Yuji. He dies, never mind, he revives him. And they start talking about the call-in games. Oh, also, uh, Nobara is dead, maybe. Uh, but they start talking about the call-in games. Megumi becomes head of the Zenin clan, and in response, Maki's like, okay, I'll be back. And she kills the entire fucking Zenin clan. So many new characters are introduced. There's Josuke, there's an angel, there's a lawyer, there's Killua, there's a comedian, and he's half naked, but it doesn't matter, because half of them die, maybe. Because Mikusukuna fed Megumi his penis, and is now in his body rather than yuji and all this shit happened you can see here that there is a much more random approach to these preceding events as opposed to the methodical build-up of everything before now don't get me wrong a lot of stuff is pretty fucking cool but with this approach came lots of questionable decisions with one of the biggest being the way the series handles death now characters in jujutsu kaisen have always come and gone very soon but I always felt like their deaths were properly handled. Like, yeah, we could have spent more time with them, but there was always a resemblance of a complete character arc, or at the very least, some type of meaningful effect when they die. Nowadays, characters are just going out like flies. Hi, Dad. Hashimo gets bodied, like straight up just annihilated. Higuruma got bodied. Gojo, the biggest character in the entire series, the most popular character in the whole series, got off-screened. Kenjaku, probably like the biggest or at least second biggest villain just dies and he says i'm passing my plan off to you choso is like maybe dead hopefully not i hope not and these aren't like spread over time either like these are back-to-back -back casualties happening in the span of like a few chapters remember when i said this even when something shocking happens it wastes no time dwelling on it and moves on to the next thing that sense of pure chaos is what makes the shibuya incident so memorable I think at this point, Jujutsu Kaisen's pacing has become kind of its greatest strength and worst enemy. Jujutsu Kaisen has always been a very fast-paced series, yet somehow it gets even faster paced. I remember when Gojo got unsealed, everyone thought that there was going to be like some breathing room and maybe some time to cool off from what just happened. But no, there's a mini time skip and they immediately get into Gojo versus Sukuna and everyone's just like, what the fuck? And again, it doesn't show us Gojo getting killed. Literally next chapter, boom, he's in heaven, and Kashimo gets right onto the battlefield along with everyone else. On one hand, something interesting is always happening around the corner, but certain elements of the series end up feeling kind of underdeveloped, and I feel like we're getting a lack of character moments. I would never suggest that JJK doesn't have any depth or merit within its characters, or that there's no character moments, that's just not true. But I think it's become very clear that Jujutsu Kaisen is a much more plot-driven series, which isn't inherently bad, but it feels like it's so dedicated to moving on to the next thing as quickly as possible that characters are usually not really given the chance to reflect on things that just happened. 
Toto is basically out of the story and we don't know exactly what happened to him. Can any of the characters like mention him? Probably Yuji, namely Yuji. When Gojo died, we only really get two reaction panels to show they're upset, only from Yuji, Maki, and Yuta. And look, I get it. They're locked in. It's do or die right now. But maybe at least some type of internal monologue during a fight to convey their distress. It's not like Gojo is their teacher that they've developed a bond with or anything. Maki killing the Zenin clan, is that something that she'll tell Yuta or was that off screen? Will Megumi actually learn who his dad was? Like ever and oh my god bro the mysteries will yuji actually find out that kenjaku is his mom will we actually get to see sakuna's backstory is there a connection between yuji and sakuna also, speaking of characters, is Nobara dead? Just fucking tell me, is she dead? Like, Megumi and Yuji are pretty much convinced she's dead, so why linger on this mystery? Because when they do reveal it, it's like, then what? Because, like, if she's dead, well then great, I waited years to be told something that deep down I probably already knew. And if she's alive, then, okay, like, what the fuck is she gonna do unless she's been training like Yuji when he was quote-unquote dead? Actually, that might not be too far off. Where the fuck is Toto again? Is he okay? Oh, he retired? Oh, okay. It, it would have been it would have been nice if the manga fucking told me that. Will Inumaki do anything? He's barely done anything this entire series besides that one part in Shibuya. Will Miwa do anything? <laughs> and yeah, a lot of these have become major points of contention for readers, causing some people to criticize the series. But at the end of the day, we don't really know exactly what Akutami is thinking when he makes such polarizing writing decisions. Decisions, which is why so many theories come up like, oh, maybe Gojo will come back, maybe Kenjaku isn't dead and will inhabit Nobara's body next, which, you know, to some can sound a bit far-fetched, but I feel like a lot of us just don't really know what to think, because he doesn't just do this shit on a whim, right? Like, there has to be something more. Kenjaku's death, Gojo's off-screen, Higuruma's death, are all these just unsatisfying deaths that we have to deal with? Or is this all part of the plan that will contribute to the final phase of the story and in retrospect these moments will be literary genius nobody knows because i don't feel like jujutsu kaisen really has a very clearly defined end goal anymore with other series i feel like you have a pretty good idea of what the ending will be with jujutsu kaisen i don't have a clue where it's going and you see these crazy theories pop up because with the way the rules are set up and from what we've seen before it's clear that yeah, kind of anything can happen. There is evidence or a feasible way for Gojo and Higuruma to come back. Some people even speculate that Yuji might be the final villain and that Megumi will have to kill him and all of these have actual merit to them. And I think that's what really keeps me going. That sense of unpredictability. This video has been very critical of the story as of its recent events, but I still really love Jujutsu Kaisen probably more than ever. There was a little tweet a while ago that was asking which manga fell off the hardest in writing. And look, whatever you think of the other three is up to you, but I don't think Jujutsu Kaisen deserves to be on this list. No matter how much it stumbles, Jujutsu Kaisen always feels like it's progressing and reinventing itself with every new chapter. I'm always on the edge of my seat seeing what crazy turn the story may take next, because this story does not play it safe and is very engaging because of that. When it creates controversy, it's not scared or confused like other series are, it's always confident in itself and it doesn't care what you think. And if nothing else, the weekly discourse of the series has been quite the spectacle. Seeing the memes, especially Lobotomy Kaisen go strong is what makes me happy. Even through these hiccups, Jujutsu Kaisen is still at the peak of its popularity whereas other series have taken their share of decline in hype and just overall respect, and I think that may be one of its biggest achievements. But of course, as we all know, beyond every flaw or problematic decision the series has made, what will determine its overall quality is the ending. Now, I'm not as literate when it comes to the series as many others may be, so if you want more detailed breakdowns or theories, I recommend going down this alley right here. But not now, for now you're with me. So this is not going to be a beat for beat breakdown of what exactly will lead to the ending, but more of an overall picture or concept, if you will, of what I think the ending will look like. For starters, I don't think Jujutsu Kaisen will have a happily ever after ending, and not just because of all the killing and blood and whatever, even from a thematic standpoint, Jujutsu Kaisen has always been a much darker series. I'm not saying it should end with Sukuno winning, no 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 no, but I definitely picture a more bleak, or at the very least, bittersweet ending for the series. And with that in mind, let's get into it.
When I think of the ending of this story, I imagine the last few pages sort of having an apocalyptic end of the world spectacle in a very similar vein to a movie like End of Evangelion or a game like Mother 3, which I think is what the merger event will look like. As people get taken out so quickly, I feel like the story is setting up for every character to die except Yuji as he has one final standoff against Sukuna and finally unleashes his true technique or domain. When this is awakened, we may get an image of everyone who passed on their dying will to him, and I have a feeling that this technique or domain will in some way interfere with the merger, causing this next evolution of humans plan to be altered, leaving the ending very ambiguous, leaving it up to the viewer to decide what really happened to the world. What I do picture though, is right at the end, Yuji meeting with everyone in the afterlife where he can finally be surrounded by the ones he loves. Wherever Gege takes this manga, I just hope he can end it on his terms and solidify this story as one of the best of its time.